the night was coming through Justice blinded, freedom dying Our fears were coming true The wind was raging, ocean crashing Sound of drums were no more People crying, a nation dying Well, welcome everyone to another edition of Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucier and friends. Just me here today, and it's been a couple weeks, hasn't it? Been a few weeks, I think that uh, we were here. Um, and um, I'm not going to be here next week either because I'm going to be preparing to go up on the mountain for Rosh Hashanah for the year 5784. So before we get into this, we just want to thank those who are on the firewall, the intercessors uh, who join us on the reset, who pray for Canada, who are looking to the Lord for a better day going forward and looking to God to answer prayer. Um, this program is specifically, kind of specifically targeted 
for the intercessors as well as those who like to stay in touch with kind of what the Lord is saying through different leaders in the body of Christ today in Canada. So <clears throat> no different. We want to give you some understanding for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear about what is yet to come. I'm, you know, calling this program what was, what is, and what is yet to come. Um, so speaking about Rosh Hashanah. So Rosh Hashanah is on God's time clock, the Jewish New Year, a new start, a very important time for the Lord, for his people. And, um, you know, this, along with any of the Jewish feasts, uh, even the Day of Atonement for that matter, or Feast of Trumpets, you know, it's, uh, I'll say it like this, I, um, we don't necessarily, we don't have to celebrate Rosh Hashanah or any of the feasts. We don't have to, but we get to. And um, so you don't have to celebrate Rosh Hashanah next Friday night in one week from today, but you get to. And so where we're going to be is we're going to be on top of a mountain. I think um, Mo has a little slide there saying Rosh Hashanah. I'm going to get him to pull that up in a moment or any time. Oh, there it is. You're welcome to join us for this if you're in the area. Rosh Hashanah at Camp Goshen, and it is an incredible view from our mountain. Yes, we own a mountain at Goshen. We have our own mountain top, and we'll be taking people up there at 4 p.m. Uh, from down below from Camp Goshen up to the mountain, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. We're starting at 6 o'clock with worship and going till the sun sets. We're going to worship from one year to the next. We're going to make some decrees, some declarations. We're going to humble ourselves as we enter into uh, the year 5784, which is on God's time clock. And again, this is not something that you have to do. This is something you get to do. I've been on three mountains in the past doing this before. I've wanted to since I moved here five years ago to the Okanagan to actually do this. Technically, this is in the Kootenays, but um, a couple of valleys over here from Kelowna, a 90-minute drive from downtown Kelowna. We're going to be having an incredible, you know, uh, fellowship, fire, and food time afterwards to celebrate the new year. And then, of course, new Jew, uh, Rosh Hashanah has two year, two days. Uh, Rosh Hashanah consists of two nights. And remember, with God's time clock, at sundown begins a new day. Well, um, we, uh, on, on night two, we'll be gathering at the embassy, Kelowna Harvest Church, and we'll be eating uh, apples dipped in honey because even in the word of God, it says to, to eat something sweet, to declare you will taste the goodness of the Lord in the next season. You're welcome to join us for that. We encourage people to, to bring some baking, some sweet stuff for afterwards to celebrate Jewish New Year. You're welcome to do that as well at the embassy. If you can't join us on top of the mountain, we'll quad you up. We will four by four you up. It's a little rough, and when the sun drops on the top of the mountain, it's just going to get a little chilly. But come and hang with us, if you would, on September 15th, Rosh Hashanah. Now, you know, this Rosh Hashanah is getting more and more attention. The, the, the calendars, the dates, and I'm going to say even the signs of the times are starting to increase, and more and more people are starting to talk about the sign of the times. And, 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 and God has many different ways that he speaks now one way, now another, though men may not perceive it, as it says in Job 33, 14. But something really shifted in my life seven years ago. Well, around that time anyway, and I knew that God was doing something significant. It would be six months later that God would move me out of Kitimat after being there for uh, 22 years. And we've been full tilt with the kingdom ever since. I'm not saying I wasn't into the kingdom before that, but it's a little bit different when you're you're a, a contractor and you've got guys working for you and life and raising up our children who are now adults and married on their own. It was very, life was different. And, and the Lord was saying, you know, um, what you were doing before was good, but I'm gonna, I have some other things for you to do. Listen, I want to get into some prophetic words, some things that have been spoken here. 
um, things that have come to pass and things that are yet to come, maybe. And we're going to talk a little bit about this coming season and how about the next seven years. But seven years ago, from this coming from this coming Rosh Hashanah, a very important sign appeared in the heavens. Now, there's this weird painting when I was growing up in the Catholic Church that hung at the back, and it's the painting of the Virgin Mary. And I'm going to get Mo to bring that one up. This is what I used to see as a kid when I was an altar boy at the back of the Catholic Church. Now, this is uh, most of the Catholic churches, the more modern ones, have this large, rather large painting at the back. Um, it's a child underneath her feet. Basically, she's just given birth. I used to think those were horns that she was standing on, but it's a crest. It's the crest of the moon. And she's covered in glory. Um, and I asked the priest one day, please tell me what this means. And the priest said, this is the Revelation 12 woman. Well, as you know, Revelation 12 woman says, <clears throat> and a great wondrous sign appeared in the heavens, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, 12 stars at her head was about to give birth. And she cried out in pain. And, and then it says in verse two, and behold, another sign appeared, a great dragon, seven heads, ten horns appeared. Uh, a dragon appeared around at that about that same time as well. Well, after, after the woman actually gave birth. And hello and welcome everyone for joining us here today in Eagle Eye. Listen, so seven years ago, this Revelation 12 woman sign, we believe was fulfilled. Now, before I show you this gra this picture of, now I just showed you the picture that was at the back of the Catholic Church. Now, this sign has appeared before. Now, I'm you know what? Let me just bring it up for you. Let's bring up the Revelation 12 showing Virgo with the stars. You know, I'm going to explain this a little bit more t tomorrow night in, uh, at Kelowna Harvest Church. We will be live at about 7 p.m. Pacific Center time with a message. I'm going to show you different slides and pictures of, of, of what God is doing, has done through the stars. So let's bring that up here, Mo. Here we go, the Revelation 12 sign. Now, Virgo is one of the 12 main constellations. When I say main, it's the, it, the there's 12 constellations um, out of the uh, 60, uh, sorry, the, um, out of the, <laughs> Out of the 88 constellations in the sky, there's 88 <clears throat> constellations. And remember, God is the one who uh, named all the stars, as the Word of God says. And God is the one who hung all the constellations and taught Seth and Enoch, as the oral history goes to the Jewish people. But this sign appeared in heaven, and this is not the first time. But there is one constellation out of the 12 main constellations that's a woman virgo and basically means a virgin the one who gives birth as a virgin and interesting that was a prophecy that was given by the prophet isaiah 600 years before the birth of jesus he said uh, the virgin will be with child and of course we didn't see that one happen for another 600 years but let's go back to that, uh, Mo. Let's go back to the Revelation 12 woman. Let's stay here for a moment. On this, on this, on Rosh Hashanah of 5777 into 5778, seven years ago, five, seven, seven years ago, this sign appeared in the heavens. What happened was. Um, when she ascended into the sky at sunup, because during September, Virgo is usually has the sun rising with her. And um, so uh, she had the moon at her feet on that day, seven years ago, on Rosh Hashanah. She was clothed in the sun like it was a shawl. The constellation at her head, uh, it says the 12 star, that she had 12 stars at her head. Well, right, well, Leo only has nine. 
But on that particular day, three more wandering stars came into the constellation of Leo, Venus, Mars, and Mercury. She had 12 stars at her head, clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, and Jupiter, the king wandering star, the king wandering star, the one who meet, whose name means justice. After Jupiter was in her womb for nine months, she he came out between her legs. She, she Jupiter was birthed out of the Virgin on Rosh Hashanah seven years ago. But guess what? This was not the first time this sign exactly had appeared. The first time was in 3 BC, 3 BC on Rosh Hashanah. And you betcha, scholars believe this was actually the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ on Rosh Hashanah. And this sign was fulfilled in its entirety 2,000 years ago. Speaking about 2,000 years ago, I have heard many people who have been like uh, turned on to the, that God is speaking through his stars, through the creation, the sun, moon, time, through the times, through the sun, moon, the stars. As Jesus said that God hung the moon and the stars for times and seasons. All right. Um, but in the last decade, people, Christians, have been finding out that God still speaks through the stars. We study the stars. It's called astronomy. When you use it for the occult, it's called astrology. There's a big difference. Um, we look to the stars and we see that God is speaking through his signs. In fact, the very first um, voice to speak about the birth of Christ was a star. And this is what turned me on and God got my attention to the, to the, to the stars, which was on Canada Day 2015. NASA stated on that day, the star of Bethlehem returned. I don't have time to go to, I'll show a little bit about it tomorrow on uh, at church and we'll be live. But basically the Bethlehem sign reappeared. Isn't that interesting that NASA would say that? And it's two wandering stars that come into alignment and they let a beacon of light go. And it happened on Canada Day, 2015. Many people saw it. Though when you're around light pollution, it's hard to see things, of course, in the skies. But the but the three wise men did see it, and it started a three-month journey or plus journey for them because they had to travel 1,200 miles. The wise men bringing the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the baby Jesus. As it says, we have seen his star. The very th first thing to proclaim the birth of Christ was a star. God speaks through the stars, and if you don't like that, you can take it up with God himself. But God is indeed speaking through his stars once again. But so speed up now. 2,000 years later, God would once again allow the Revelation 12 woman sign to be filled, fulfilled perfectly. And though there are some people who are saying it's being fulfilled again on, on, on uh, this Rosh Hashanah or on this September 23rd, that is not entirely true. The Revelation 12 sign had, had a birth. Nine months before Rosh Hashanah of the year 577 or year 2017, bef um, before we went into um, uh, uh, 2018, um, 2017 and 2018, um, <clears throat> nine months earlier, Jupiter went into the womb of Virgo and he moves, Jupiter moves through the sky and then stops for nine months. And then he stops for nine months. It's called retrograde motion if you're a scientist. But uh, what's happening with uh, the comet uh, that is showing up here in a few days, a very powerful bright comet that is in the Revelation 12 woman sign with all the other signs, which maybe quickly let's, I think I gave you another Revelation 12 poster there. Uh, <clears throat> Mo, let's quickly look at this one. And I do not have time to explain all of this or getting going to it all of it. I haven't studied it all out. But the Revelation 12 sign, basically the different stars and happenings that have been at the time of Virgo, um, 
is incredible. So the Revelation 12 sign, that this is what's happening September 19th. She will rise again, clothed the sun, the moon will again be at her feet. But this time, Jupiter is no longer in her womb. He's been birthed. But a very, very bright comet um, uh, is, is appearing. And some people say it's like God is like saying, do I have your attention now? But point, we're going to leave that alone. We're not going to go into that too deep. I don't want to freak people out. But listen, God does speak through the stars. I want to go over with you a few prophetic words that have been spoken here. And we're going to talk a little bit about what gets to come. We're going to be running out of time here real quick. So thank you once again for joining us here on Prophetic Perspectives. Eagle Eye. And um, if you would like more information, you can email me at crazymaytee at gmail.com. That's crazymaytee at gmail.com. That's my email if you want to get a hold of me. And um, But listen, something that happened recently. Oh, and by the way, thank you for those who prayed for the fires to be under control. Many people did lose their homes. Um, there, there, there is, you know, uh, fires that have been going on around the world, you know, and June 2nd, this past June 2nd, I'm going to say this again for those who did not catch this. But on June 2nd, an article came out on CBC at four in the morning stating that the Quebec government had banned us from gathering at our location in the convention center, our ministry, the Battle for Canada and the and the Revival Reformation Alliance, the Quebec, Quebec government banned us from gathering um, and canceled our event that was supposed to start on June 23rd. On the very same day, about six hours after CBC put out the article, on a sunny day, a not cloudy day at all, major forest fires erupted all over Quebec. And if you watch the satellite imagery of what happened, there's no lightning, there's no storms, there's no clouds. But if you're looking at Quebec, fires just started erupting, boom, 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 boom. And of course, it smoked out all of New York and they weren't very happy with it. And um, interesting, these fires that are being set by arsonists and when they are caught, it's not, you know, they're not re, re being really told much. But this is a, a, a tactic and a ploy of the enemy that we need to pray for and against. And those who are doing this, this destructive um, practice of lighting forest fires, that they would be brought to justice. Let me just say that. So, and of course, the Kelowna fires were man-made. And they're being quiet about that as well. And um, fires of the past, man-made, so most of them. And uh, when, when um, if lightning does start the odd fire, it's interesting how they are going about putting out these fires. Anyway, it's definitely something to pray, pray about. But thank you for those who prayed. We were evacuated for a while. Of course, we got back into our house just before we went to Saskatoon. But I want to remind us of a few things that I've, I've spoken here uh, from this desk on Eagle Eye. And um, um, <clears throat> one of them, one of them, uh, different dreams and different words that I've told you about. First of all, I told you about um, times of the past where I would crack scripture. Over, I would grab my Bible and would open over and over and over again. And, and for for a year plus, it was opening up to Isaiah 64. Lord, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Going to our next season, I want to remind you, this is still the prayer. Isaiah 64, rend the heavens and come down. And then I was cracking in the same Bible, Daniel 3, Daniel 3, Daniel 3. And it's where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow their knee to the golden idol that was uh, uh, 90 feet tall, made of gold. And I felt the Lord say, there's coming a day that you're going to have to stand. Well, as some of you know, um, as when COVID restrictions hit, we were only allowed 50 people in churches here in British Columbia for like a period of seven months. At, at the end of those seven months, we were in November. And what Bonnie Henry, our health officer, did was she banned the church from gathering at all. 
because we had a few cases in different churches um, who had spread COVID. About 36 COVID cases were linked to, to churches over a period of six months um, in all of British Columbia. Meanwhile, Whistler um, or Big White would have 200 and, uh, cases in one month at the ski hills, but they were allowed to remain open. And we knew it was wrong to shut the church. So we asked the Lord what we should do. And we felt we were supposed to keep our churches open and not obey unrighteous laws that are against our religious freedoms and what is right. If the bars are allowed to be open and them drinking at the bar unmasked and eating wings, the church should be allowed to at least gather half a dozen people to have communion masked. But no, we were not allowed and we made a stand. At that time, I said, Lord, give me a dream of what I'm supposed to do. At that, uh, On that night, at the end of November, I had a dream, beginning of December of the year 2020, I had a dream. In that dream, I stood on a, on, on, upon a podium, and I was, there was hundreds, thousands of people all around me, and I shouted out in a loud voice, and I said, Pastors of Canada, we must we must keep the churches open and we must stand united. That was my dream that the Lord would give me on that night. Well, I knew that the Lord was saying it's time to stand. And uh, um, as you know, we did keep our churches open and we did get a bunch of fines. Um, and a lot of people who did shut their churches and I'm, you're, they're going to stand this time. And they're going to have an opportunity to stand against this Marxist takeover of our nation and the stripping of our freedoms that's connected to the beast, that's connected to um, a one world government. We must stand. We must. You're going to have your opportunity, by the way, to stand in the days to come. Um, So I had that dream. We did make a stand. I know that a lot of people didn't understand our stand. But I hope you understand our stand now. Okay, I'll just leave that there. I had a dream, um, and of and and um, of a sign that said, "Check your fuel." You know how you're traveling between towns, and if it's like a hundred or 150 kilometers to the next fill-up station, sometimes it'll say, "Check your fuel," because there's no services for a while. And this is coming. And by the way, I'm going to encourage you, get the oil when and where you can, because I'm telling you there are lockdowns that are coming. There is tyranny. There is. I'm telling you the truth here right now. The darkness that I saw coming years ago is here, and it's only going to increase. But I'm telling you, so when I used to crack after Daniel 3, cracking Daniel 3, I started cracking over and over again. uh, Matthew 25, which says, get the oil. The wise virgins had the oil. Of course, everyone's fallen asleep, but at midnight, a cry rings out. I'm telling you, um, we're entering into some dark times, which leads for me to tell you, and I want to remind, maybe you're kind of new here to the ministry, and if you are, and hey, what's the RA about? What's the firewall about? What's Battle for Canada about? Um, I, I you know, for years I belonged to the Canadian Prophetic Council, and we would come together and share dreams and insights and what we felt the Lord was saying that he's doing in these times. Well, in the year 2016 and 2017, and that's like uh, seven, uh, eight, uh, uh, seven years ago, 2017, uh, 2016 to seven years ago, 2017, six years ago. So um, I, for a year, I had uh, I had the Lord keep speaking to me and bringing me around to what was coming. And the Lord showed me a darkness coming in the year 2020. He did never, he never showed it lifting, but he said this, if Canada, if you do not seek me and come together, you're going to miss the harvest. The harvest is coming in. It's trickling in. There's people being saved. The, the the larger revival that we see that we know is 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 en route. It's so close to a large en masse harvest. That's because, and, and what's going to happen is for fear. For fear because a great darkness is coming. 
you must prepare. I'm telling you guys to prepare. I didn't understand that it was COVID when the darkness did hit, but I told you and I told different people around Canada, a darkness is coming in the year 2020 and we must gather. So we did and we started the Battle for Canada events. And, and in the year 2020, we on July 1st, we started the firewall, which is still going now. It's in its fourth, fourth year of 24-7 prayer. I never saw the darkness end. The darkness is here. I personally feel you guys we have, we are we are cro- crossing over into yet a most a most incredible great and terrible season i believe we're entering into a tribulation of sorts that the last 3 years of loss of freedoms attack on freedoms attack on sovereignty attack on uh, the your rights as a canadian that was that was uh, challenged it's going to the next level, and we must prepare. Goshens must be built spiritually and physically. There are many people preparing their properties to house people, to bring people in, self-sufficient ones. Um, some people are building physical uh, RV parks. Some people are building smaller ones. Some people are gathering intercessors and friends and family to have a spiritual Goshen. We need it. Uh, that's what the firewall has been. It's been a family, and and if you're part of that family, fantastic. Um, so you know, I did see this come. I did see this, and as you know, a darkness came, and it locked us down. It shut churches. It some churches are still shut down. All right, but um, you know, I, I'm let, let me go on. Let me talk about a few more things. Here's something encouraging. I've had dreams of killing animals over the last few years. First of all, some of you might remember the dream where I brought forward. Um, In my dream, um, uh, I was with Pastor Pauline and uh, Pastor Denver, and we it was nighttime. There was a a row of hedges of trees, and and there was like a soccer field, but it was close to a forest. And they said, there's a grizzly there's a grizzly coming out of the woods and he's coming after you. And they took off down the fence line. They were gone. But I knew this grizzly was after them. I knew this grizzly was after my friends. I knew this devouring grizzly was going to kill me and then them. So I went towards it to confront it. And just as I went towards it, it came out of the woods about 15 yards away, massive grizzly hair, head hanging down, swinging his head. And I looked about 30 yards away, or maybe it was about 15, maybe it was the same distance. My sword was laying in the dirt and I knew I didn't have time to go and get the sword because it would just run and pounce on me if I tried to go that way. And it was just coming really slow. But behind me was a mic stand with a metal base. And I, as a, the bear was only about five yards away, I grabbed the mic stand and I thought I was dead anyway. And with all I had, I swung it. I jumped in the air and swung the mic stand on the back of the bear's head, this metal base and it smashed the bear's head and it dropped him. And he was shaking his head and half knocked him out. And I ran. Oh, I had run, I stunned the bear and I had time to run over and grab my sword. I came back and with two swipes, I cut its head off. Now, normally in dreams, everyone runs from bears and they they never they, you know, they're half eaten or they're getting attacked. They're very scared, run away. I can't believe it. But hey, I killed the bear in this dream. The next dream was two large crocodiles, probably 30 feet in length, were coming after Fatine, myself, and a bunch. And we were in this little trailer on the on the beach with these this ramp going up to it. And, the, and the, the crocodiles came out of the ocean. I was hiding around a corner, and the pickaxe was there. And I, I said, I'm dead anyway. So I swung with all of my might, and I picked. I stuck this first crocodile to the ground, pinned his head to the ground with his pickaxe. But I ran, and I ran around the back of the cabin, and I ran up this ramp into the cabin, but the I knew the walls were like paper thin, the doors were paper thin, and this crocodile was going to come and kill us and eat us. As he was coming under the ramp, coming around, there was a paddle there, and I struck it in the head through the slats of the ramp, and the paddle broke into a spear, and I I cut the crocodile's head off. That was, that was one dream. Then there was another dream. Um, where there was rabid cats after me and my little Gimli um, in this parking lot. And I was able to kill all these rabid cats with my hands. Now, I like cats. Don't take this the wrong way. But this was interesting that the Lord kept giving me dreams 
about uh, dangerous cre- creatures. Or this one, demonic pigs. You ever hear the term when pigs fly? Well, these demonic pigs were flying through the air, sailing. They had eyes of red, and one came down after us. Rabid cats. Yeah, I killed them all with my three of them with my hands, man, because they were after my dog. Don't touch my friend. Don't touch my dog. Okay, but this these demonic pigs, they were after us, and they were massive. They were like new. The best way I could describe was like nuclear waste demonic pigs. And they came around the corner. There's a flat piece of steel there. I grabbed it. I stuck it through the pig, and I pulled it out of its head, and I killed this pig with my bare hands, something I could never, ever do um, in real life. And um, I've got, I'm have got i pretty strong, but not that type of strong. And um, and, uh, and and so that, that, that was some dreams about animals. The good news is, you guys, here's some good news. Listen to me. I represent you. I represent the fivefold. I represent a, this one of the saints. I represent just an ordinary person. Yes, spirit of might is a must in this next season. The spirit of might. Cheers to that, Matthew. Well, we are going to have authority over that which demonic and these things that come against. I'm telling you. Dark days, tribulation days are here and coming. It's going to be scary. You know, uh, get your cash out of the banks. Just saying, move to Goshen. I just believe, I believe that is, I I, I know, I, I, uh, 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 that is not a plug. That's not a plug for our Goshen. Ours is pretty rough. You know, um, I, I believe Saskatchewan is a place to, to, to really go. Of course, if you ever want to come and see our ghost and talk to me, but um, we are entering into the most demonic days. But we're going to have authority over things for those who love the Lord, for those who <laughs> stand for life. Amen. We have authority over dem- demonic flying pigs. I know dreams, right? But these dreams, Karen. I wasn't scared anymore. Well, I faced my fears if I was scared. There was an element of fear, but if we face the fears, kill those demonic things. Okay, so so listen. Um, <clears throat> by you know, um, let me let me go back to something. Fifty seven that year, twenty twenty, when the darkness was released, and I've spoke about it here before. But we entered the decade of pay. Pay is the number eighty. And it looks like a G, or it looks like someone with his mouth open, but it's got the, but it's weird. His teeth are weird. Rabbis actually say this stands for Pharaoh getting his tooth knocked out. This decade of pay, pay is a root word for Pesach, which is Passover. And interesting, for the first time in 3,500 years, Israel once again was locked down on Passover, just like the original Passover. And they said, you cannot come out of your homes. 3,500 years ago, they put the blood over the doorpost and they were told, do not come out of your house. The death angel was passing over. And of course, this virus that was released into the air was passing over the homes of Israel. They were commanded to stay in their homes 3,500 years later. But this decade of 10 years. Passover was the result of 10 plagues. And I believe we're entering into a time of plagues, of of darkness over the earth. And even the Israelites had to share in the first three plagues. But number four, they didn't have to, nor did they in number five. And when they came to the plague of darkness, it was light in Goshen where they lived. Lots of prophets have been speaking about Goshen, and I'm here to trumpet the same. The Lord spoke to us two years ago. Sorry, he spoke to us three years ago about getting a piece of property, two years ago about calling it a Goshen, and we've been building the Goshen ever since. And this is a place a place of refuge for believers where we're going to, we're working towards self-sustainability, where we have times of worship and prayer together. Uh, connected into Starlink to still run the firewall and other programs as we see fit. 
can the Lord do this? I believe he can. And this is our trajectory and what we're doing because it's just about to get crazier out there. It's about to get just a little bit darker. Now, listen, we did, we, the year 2020 was the year 5780. And that's when these plagues started. All right. So, but we're entering now the third year of the decade of, of, of we, we just completed three. We're entering the fourth. And this is the number, f- the number four, which is the letter Dalit. I'm going to bring up that other poster. And it, and it just looks, it's a, just a Jewish letter that kind of looks like a doorway. Uh, why don't you show them that there, Mo, what we got to show them. This is the number four or the letter Dalit. This is the part of the year 5784. This looks like a door. But it's interesting because if you look into the Hebrew meaning, it actually means to be poor or impoverished. Humble, poor, impoverished. So this is what I have to say about that. And I'm going to quote Prophet Barry Miracle with what he said when we were together a year ago with our in, in Moose Jaw on the threshold of uh in in Saskatchewan um and it was the door is the floor in other words as you humble yourself before the lord maybe even lay prostrate before him the door is the floor through humility we will win through humility calling upon god well this is no different than any of you who are having a walk with jesus you must Stay humble. You must stay in his word. You must you must seek him. You cannot stop. You must choose faith over fear. You're going to want to fear. You're going to want to not trust the Lord. But I'm telling you, now is the time. You must. That's why you must have the oil. You must continue to gather when and where you can and stay connected to ministries that are going to lift you up and tell you the truth. But you must have the gift of faith. You must you must exercise your faith for the days that are to come. We're going through the valley of the shadow of death. We're, en- we're, we're ending the year 23 here, coming soon, 2023 or 5783. You got to know that the Lord is your shepherd. You must not fear. Even if you're in the valley of the shadow of death, you must be at his table. You must be anointed the head on the head. And it's interesting, you know, Psalm 23, he anoints my head with oil. Oil is a symbol of the Holy ghost. And on the head is where they, where the Holy ghost rested on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter two, we must be filled with the Holy ghost all the time. We must come to the table all the time. We must be at his table in the, even though it's it, it in the presence of the enemies. All right. Because we're entering number 24. We're entering Psalm 24. We're entering in 5784. Okay, so uh, 24, that's a whole other thing. You've heard me speak about it before. But, you know, it's interesting that we are stuck at this moment with the 23rd Prime Minister. Um, We've said it here before. You know, and I'm going to go back a little bit before I talk about um, the next Prime Minister. I told you... (coughs) that Justin Trudeau would win when he did again, that uh, that Aaron O'Toole would lose, that he would not step down, that he'd have to be removed. And Aaron, it happened exactly that. I I told um, Fateen, it was who would win. Not that I not that I agree. In fact, I, I'm going to say something. We There's the, the, the convention, the delegates convention, and setting the laws for or setting some of the, the things that um, – uh, you know, the conservatives are fighting for what they're going to, some of their policies that's happening right now in Quebec. And a lot of people are praying for that. A lot of people that are faith teens there and different ones who are called to the political mountain are there. But I have said it here before that the conservative party of conservative party of Kitimat is indeed the conservative party of Canada is indeed a rotten tree that must come down. I'm continue to vote. I'm not saying don't vote, but you know what? Um, Gone are the days where we, we, where we're going to have a, 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 um, 
a prime minister lead the nation. It's either God ruling his people or it's a world beast system ruling Canada now. Pierre Polyev will be the next, who will be number 24. And I, 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 we know that, and I know that, and I've told him that. He will be the 24th prime minister if it's allowed to go to the election. And you know what? There will be a surge of Canadian pride once again, a surge for a while. It will be temporary. But I'm telling you the truth. Those who do not love the Lord, it's not going to go well for them. He is not the Savior. Jesus Christ is. And the true number 24 is the 24 elders who throw their crowns down at Jesus, worshiping the Lord. Those are the 24. Those are the ones who are very important in setting the laws coming ahead. We are being, we are, we have lost the nation, the nations to the beast system, to globalists, and money rules the day, and the enemy, and God is handing them over to themselves. And there, there's, 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 there's n- not a day coming until after, until the millennial reign of Christ, where the saints are going to rule all the governments. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. And I'm telling you, the tribulation is coming. It's upon us very soon here. And we must get ready uh, to um, <laughs> to make it through it because you're not getting raptured. I do. I pers- If it happens, great. Well, wonderful. I do not believe that we're going to get raptured before the tribulation. I don't believe it. I don't see it. I know God is preparing us. That's why he has having us build a Goshen. All right. So... Um, the number 24, of course, not only does the prime minister, are we stuck with number 23 right now, Justin Trudeau, but the prime minister's uh, address is 24 Sussex. And something big that is coming down the line is the very last scripture verse is to be fulfilled. There's a move of God coming and that we are to pray for. And it's the fathers to the sons and the sons to the father. The, the enemy is working very hard at dividing family and even taking parental rights and causing a division and and uh, between the kids and the parents saying, don't tell your parents what's going on here. And so, indeed, there's a million man march on September 20th happening in cities across Canada. I suggest you go be part of the march. Stand for the parental rights. We are called to stand in these days against unrighteousness. I believe that is an absolute biblical thing to do to take the public square when when um, lawmakers break the law. They must be held accountable. But um, so <clears throat> back to back to number 24. The last scripture verse is Malachi 6, 4, sorry, 4, 6, which says, I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a curse. Listen, we must pray against that curse. We must pray for the fathers to the kids and the kids to the fathers. <laughs> Sons to the fathers, fathers. There's a move coming of generations coming together. And I'm telling you, if you can hear my voice and you're Gen X, it's time to stand up and take your place. Uh, we need to lead in for such a time as this. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, you know, um, with, with, with Dalit, the number four, which looks like a door, and the floor of humility is the door into your destiny. Before Rosh Hashanah, before Jewish New Year, which is in one week, do some business with God. Be honest with God. Be honest with other people. If you're scared of the Holy Ghost, face your fears and invite the baptism of the Holy Ghost like you've never had it before. Make sure your head is anointed with oil. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to do something just a little bit different here for the last few moments of this program. But if there's a question you might have, um, I would love to answer you um, about any of the topics that I've said and just try. We're going to take a few minutes. If somebody who's watching, I know that I can see 50 people or so you're watching. Does anyone have a question that I could answer you the best I can. Just type it in the chat if you would, or in the in the Facebook. I I can see your comments, and I would love to answer anything. Think about it, or what I should talk about. What you would like to know? 
I'll continue to say a few things. And by the way, four main generations right now, the boomers, the Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Zs. There is a movement coming for us to work together. We need the youth and zeal of Gen Z. We need the, the, we need the strong backs of the millennials to do a lot of the heavy lifting. We now need a lot of, we need the, um, we need the experience of Gen Z, the experience and the favor that Gen Z carries to start to walk now. Um, um, and, uh, to lead in the nation, Gen Xers. And we need the wisdom in the stories of the boomers. We need the wisdom and the prayers. Is there anything happening in the stars at the moment? Well, um, I'm going to answer that tomorrow in my message because it's easier to show you on some slides. I will say this though. And as you know, you know, and even NASA said it, when I started looking at the stars in 2015, they said Jupiter is just about to do some very interesting things. You see, Jupiter is not always at the same place every year, and he goes through these patterns. But as he traveled through the constellations, as he went after he came through the legs and was birthed, and remember, Jupiter is the king wandering star, symbolic of Jesus the Messiah. And remember, there are three kings. There are three kings just like the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, there's three in one, in the, in, in the stars, in the constellation stars themselves. The first one is Leo, which is the king constellation. And at the toe of Leo, of the king constellation, there's the king star, Regulus. And the king wandering star is Jupiter. And when, <clears throat> and when this Bethlehem sign happened, uh, Jupiter and Venus were together, two stars over the toe of Regulus, and it was an incredible sign. But since then, Jupiter has been doing some incredible things. He went then to Libra, which is the scales, which talks about judgment coming. And then he went to um, uh, um, Scorpio and was at the, and Jupiter sat there by the ear of uh, Scorpio basically telling him that his time is short. And he is the one who strikes the heel of the Messiah. And then Jupiter left and for nine months sat at the elbow, which launches the arrow from Sagittarius to let an arrow go at Scorpio. And then, of course, uh, Jupiter then went into the waterfall and hung out with Aquarius. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that after. All right. Yes, we need the youth and zeal and the wisdom of the great. We need all of us together. We need a move. And by the way, it's a number 24. Four times six, which is Malachi 4, 6, is the number 24. And remember, I'm just going to, some of you, Kirk Smith had a dream that he was in the 24th parliamentary suite. Trudeau walked in, but uh, uh, he, 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 he couldn't have it that sweet anymore. And there was a dream of 24 geese that came up and uh, and over us and went to uh, the Birch tree, which is Bob Birch. That was another dream of Kirk Smith as well. Um, let me tell you about a couple things that are coming here. Um, harvest time. I want to invite you to this. This is going to be more of just a local thing, but it's not turning out that out to be. Let's throw that slide up there. I can see it behind me. Harvest time to celebration 20 years for Harvest Ministries International since our little church plant in the little village of Kinemet. It's going to be here in Kelowna. You can go to and register at ra.ca. We've got leaders coming from around the nation. Sammy Robinson's opening up. Charlie Robinson, like days of old at Fresh Fire, is emceeing this event. Summit Sounds coming from <laughs> uh, Edmonton, Chris Mathers, Barry Miracle. Kirk Smith, uh, different lead, Renee McIntyre, different leaders from all over the place. And of course, our band is playing there. We're going to be gathering at Willow Park. Uh, uh, 700 seats are available. Um, and uh, you must register for this event. You must register for this event. 
This is at the Eagle's Nest of Kelowna, and I believe this is going to be very pivotal in shifting into the next season. This is going to be instrumental, pivotal, pivotal. This is going to be the oil that you must get as a virgin. There's going to be many things that are spoken at this event, as well as times of celebration. And by the way, it's it's $49 for the whole event, which helps us pay and bring people in and pay for their flights and their and their hotels and everything to bring people in to bring the word of the Lord. But if you want to eat with us, there's two, listen to this, Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon. We're having brisket smoked meat luncheon with all the fixings on the afternoon. It's kind of like dinner, but it's after the morning service. It's like a, it's like, a, consider it a lunch supper all in one for $25 brisket smoked, you know, pork loin. The next day on Saturday, it's Thanksgiving weekend. So what are we going to do? We're going to have turkey and all the fixings. Thanks. We're going to have cake and desserts and all that stuff. $25 per lunch. That's at $25. I went to Subway the other day. I got a Subway meal. Didn't even need to order double meat. $20. Well, you want to come out for something a little bit better than that. Join us. Register at RE. We only have 258 lunch places available. By the way, there's seat sales on right now. Kelowna is an international airport. You can fly direct from Calgary, uh, from Montreal, from Toronto, from Edmonton, direct flights, 20 years. And let's celebrate all the Lord has done. I remember Sammy Robinson and Charlie coming. We were not even a year old, came and visited us in Kelowna. Uh, Char Sammy was only 16. Interesting. And now he's kicking off our event here for our 20th anniversary. Um, amazing. Yeah, good price. So basically, for the event and for both lunches, which is one meal a day will hold you, $99. $99. Come and celebrate with us. Come and party with us. Come and hear the word of the Lord. Come and receive impartation. I believe a fresh impartation for fivefold, for business, for worship, for intercession will be at this time. Oh, and of course, our very own National Prayer Strike Director, Casey, Wendy Lee, some of the dance team. Uh, this is going to be a glorious time on that stage there at Willow Park. Uh, it's going to be just amazing. Any other posters that I gave you, Mo, that we're supposed to throw up? I don't know. What else did I throw in there? Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. This one. Check this out. In two Wednesdays from now, this is happening around the nation. Around the nation. Cities all over Canada. The Million March for Children. This is all about parental rights. Myself, Mitch Murphy, Ted Koontz, Colin Rothwell, we're heading this up for Kelowna. Wednesday morning, September 20th, the march in the city starts at 11 a.m. Come and stand. Yes, Jenna Halliday, thank you for the poster for Harvest Time. Yes, join us. Uh, join people around Canada for the Million Man March. All right. Well, listen, this has been an, another honor to be here with Eagle Eye, trying to give you guys some things to pray about, consideration. I hope I was clear enough for you. And about the tribulation. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But a greater darkness is about to come. And a great fear is going to hit so much of humanity. And people are looking for the truth that you have. That Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. It's time to share your faith. It's time to be a prayer warrior. It's time to stand in faith. Your family and your friends are counting on you to be a light to them. All right. So with that, this has been another edition of Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives. Remember, surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. That's Amos 3.7. You guys have a great week. Bye-bye.